forget to turn it on. All right. So we went over to our forecastactivity.kt file. So far, we've added this. We instantiated a new weather retriever object that we're calling retriever. Again, if that helps you, put that in there. Instantiate a weather retriever object. That's what that is. All right. Set up a callback. All right. And I'll, we'll talk about that in just a second. Okay. Now I get to do this again. And I, I actually like to do this. Maybe you don't enjoy it at all. I don't know. But... For this, hopefully, to make some sense, I'm going to give you a non-computer example, semi-non-computer example. I think I told you for many years, or many years ago, for three and a half years, I worked for AT&T Bell Labs. Okay? The reason I'm telling you that is I remember this when I was a little kid. When I was a little kid, we'd always, you know, and, and my, if we'd leave my grandmother's house, let's say, and the weather was bad, my grandma would say, when you get home, Call, let it ring twice, and then hang up. Okay? That was the signal. The problem was, after a while, what ended up happening was the phone company figured that out. They were losing money. So what they did was what you heard ringing wasn't what the other person heard ringing. So you didn't know if it was actually ringing twice or not. The reason they were doing that is they wanted you to call. Because once you picked up the way that the billing worked in those days... There, there was a charge, but if you just let it ring, there was no charge. Well, what, what this has to do with anything is what we're saying is this callback, this is what we want to have happen. We're going to want that callback that we had in the other program to run in just a minute. All right. So we want to come in here. We want to put in all of this stuff here as it shows. All right. I'm surprised. I thought we were going to get a light bulb here, but it says... Object is not an abstract class and does not implement an abstract member. Abstract member. So, if you notice though, when I've got here, it says public abstract fun on failure. Everybody see that? What it needs is it needs inside of here, all right, it needs us to override two functions. One that says, what do you want to do if this works? And one that says, what do you want to do if this doesn't work? All right, I'm surprised because what this message that came up should have come up in a light bulb. So we're going to have to manually type it in. It's no big, big thing. Just a couple lines of code. So I'm going to put in here override fun on response call. And I can steal this. Okay, now if I do this, if you look on the screen here and I put in this, all right, I'm going to put in here comma, all right, and I'm going to say response, I have to make this small again so that you can read all of it, all right, but I, I'm trying to show you something here, I'm going to get an error when I get done with this, and I want to say response, list, forecast, etc., just exactly what we had before, all right. Now, the reason that I'm getting these errors here, the reason I'm getting these errors, in fact, if you look at, at it over here, it's saying it's possible this is going to return null. You are not accounting for the fact that this might return null. So we have to account for the fact that this might return null. How do we do that? We come to the end here. And we put in a question mark. I'm not sure. I mean, that's the right code. I'm not sure why that didn't go away, but it didn't. I'm hoping it does in a minute. So let me double check my code. Override fun on response. Call. Call list forecast. That's all correct. Question mark. Response colon. Of this one. All right. 
Technically, yes, there should, but I don't think that's what the error actually is. What I'm wondering is if, for some reason, this function on response without a body must be abstract. No, it must not. If you put what? I'm sorry. At the end of it, put paren paren. All right. No. What we actually want to put there is at the end of it, and I'm running out of room, is a curly brace. All right. Because what we want to do is this is what we want to do if it succeeds. I think the reason we're getting the message, the error message, it's right here. I think we have to say retrofit to dot response. All right. Still doesn't like it. And you, because you say retrofit, not retorfit, all right, and you might need it here too. Okay, so that's real big now, but just I'll put it there so you can see. Is does everybody have that typed in right there? All right, then I'll move this over so you can see virtually all of it. You're supposed to be able to do a control and, and go on the mouse wheel and make this smaller, but it's not working. I know, hard to believe something on my machine isn't working, but it's not. Probably can put this over multiple lines, though. I don't know why I couldn't. That makes it easier for you to read. There you go. Now, I still have an error message. All right? There's two more things we have to do. When it works, we've got to tell it what we want it to do. We haven't told it anything yet. All right? We have not told it anything yet. Now, if you stop for a second, okay, we could do this. Don't type this in. But we could just write in print line. It worked. We could do something like that. Don't do that. Because that's not really, I mean, it'll say it worked. But big deal. We want this stuff to print out. Right there. We want that to print out. All right? And hopefully, and you're all smart people in here, you're all smart enough to realize we want to print out something three times, correct? Which should kind of hit in your head. Is that going to be a loop in there? Yes. So we're going to need to put what we're going to do next into, into rather, a loop. All right? So we're going to say in here, for, and remember, this name that we come up with next, it's up to us. We'll call it forecast day. There is no variable called forecast day. I'm making it up. All right, so for forecast day in response. Now, when we did the response before, all right, when we did that, when we did the response, we had to use the question mark. So now we're going to have to turn it off. That's what I told you about before. So we're going to have to say, instead of saying response, we're going to have to be saying response, exclamation point, exclamation point, dot, body, exclamation point, exclamation point, paren, all right? And we really should put a curly at the end there. It'll probably work if we don't, but I'm putting one there anyway. All right, and what do we want to do? This is what we're going to want to do three times. Print line. Now, I'm going to put this in, and then I'm going to explain to you exactly what it means. Learn to spell though.
in English, and I can put a comment in here, you can too if you want to, but in English what we're saying here is if this succeeds, print out all forecast info. Okay? That's what we want to have happen. Now, I think this is so freaking cool, this line of code right here. Remember we talked about string interpolation where you can use the dollar sign and you can put a variable right into a string? When you do that and you use string interpolation, if you put that variable inside of curly braces, if it's a variable that has properties, you could put dot and it brings up the IntelliSense. That's pretty neat. That ain't available in Java. So ideally, if this works, you'll try it on yours in a minute, what you should see in your logcat window is it should say high colon 73, low colon 47. Then on the next line, high colon 81, low colon 66. Then on the next line, high colon 100, low colon 77. Does that make sense? We're telling it that's what we want to have happen if it succeeds. Notice if you look on the screen, please, the word object is still red because we haven't told it to do what to do if it fails. We have to do that. So I'm going to grab this line right here. See this? I'm going to grab everything that's right here. All that. All that stuff that you see. Those, my, for me, it's three lines. For you, it might be two lines. If you didn't put in a comment, it might all be on the same line. So I'm going to copy that to the clipboard. And right, after, right underneath the first function, I'm going to paste that in. Well, it's giving me a lot of errors because I don't want to say here, I don't want to say on response. I want to say here on failure. All right. And it's giving me the error because I've got this, but I didn't put in my ending curly brace. And I didn't put anything, so if this fails. And I'll just say print out error message. So all we'll do is we'll just say print line. Sorry, it failed. All right. So why am I still getting an error on this? On failure overrides nothing. Failure call. Oh, it's because this is different. All right. You can't just totally do that. All right. So that's question mark T bless you colon throwable question mark. Hey, all the errors are gone. So in English, this is saying, if it succeeds, print out all the information. But if it fails, just print out a line that says, sorry, it failed. So now, that is all the, oh, one more line of code, then we're done. Okay, one more line. It should be right here, all right? Right after that curly brace for the val callback, we have to put in one more line of code. Then we're done for the day, thank goodness, all right? And that is retriever, retriever dot get forecast callback. Okay, that should be everything. Go ahead, try it, save it, run it, look in your log count window, and see if that information comes in there. Now, you know, you don't have to look, but please listen to this. If you got nothing else out of what we've done so far, hopefully one thing that you did get out of it, it's kind of tough to get information from the Internet. There's a lot of work that's involved. So it's possible for your project, you might be more, not hard coding, but you, but you might create an array, for example, 
that has the information your list view uses. That's going to take the amount of code like we put in there, and it's going to cut it down by more than half. All right. So it depends on what it is you want to do. Some of you have, co have come in and, and talked to me already about your plans and what you're planning on doing. Some of the stuff is very novel. In other words, it could involve a lot of work. If whatever it is you plan to do, I don't know if you've ever heard this before, but I've said this, all right? For years, I was a programmer analyst, which meant that not only did I have to program stuff, but I had to talk to end users. What I typically did when I talked to an end user is I gave them three ways of doing something. And I called them, this is nothing I made up, I read it in a book a long time ago. They were the Volkswagen plan, the Buick plan, and the Cadillac plan. The Volkswagen plan was the cheapest, but I had to do the most work. So it might have been the cheapest, but you had to employ me longer or whatever. The Cadillac meant I was going to grab somebody else's software and tweak it. And the Buick was somewhere in the middle. The reason I'm telling you that is if... A.B. here says, I'm doing this for my project, whatever it happens to be. And, you, and she thinks to herself, you know, it might be a little hard. Then not only come up with that version of it, but come up with a scaled down version. In case when you're trying to work on your project, you're not able to incorporate everything you want. You understand what I'm saying? You really should be doing that. I don't care if you have three versions. If you have a, a Volkswagen, a Buick, and a Cadillac, doesn't matter, but have at least two have some kind of a fallback. Ethan told me what he plans on doing for his project, and he even said, I'm not sure with all this stuff, kind of paraphrasing what you said to me, if it'll all work. And that's kind of what I told him, was, you know, then figure out what you think you'll be able to do at a minimum, and that'll be your fallback. So if you come up with problems, you'll be able to do that. All right. Now, was anybody able to run it? Did you did the did the values come out in your in your lockout window, or did it say it failed? Yours worked. Because mine still was giving me all sorts of grief. I'm going to try to do a file save all, but I don't know I don't know what the heck is going on with this machine. But when I tried to run it, literally it just hung. It this hung so long before. I thought I didn't have a virtual device, so I created a new one. That's why I got this one. All right. I'm hoping that mine works, but if all that happens is an emulator comes up and doesn't show anything, I have no proof that mine works. Okay. And I'm going to just leave that for a while and let it go. If you look up on the screen, please, everyone. All right. Earlier, Valerie was having a problem, you know, getting her program to work. Through, From what I could tell, no fault of her own. It just wasn't working for whatever reason. If you look up on the screen here, this is what Evan recommended that she do. And that was to click on File right there and go down about two-thirds of the way, and choose Invalidate Caches Restart. There is so much stuff happening behind the scenes here that, to me, it's like this software is, like, is, is basically saying to you, I want to screw with you, and I'm going to find a way. Have you seen those commercials on TV with the guy for Allstate, the, the newest one? He's Supposedly, he's the cell phone in the car, and he's going, zzz, 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 and the guy keeps reaching for his cell phone. Finally, he goes in and it's like he grabs it, but he looks up and he hits the guy in front of him. That guy is mayhem. That's kind of what this software is. It's mayhem. It's looking for a reason not to work. And if you give it one, it'll be glad to run with it. So what I'm saying is if you have problems, we already talked about, you might have to do the build, clean, build, rebuild, and build your APK. If you're still having problems, you may want to try this. If you're going to do that, It'll give you a bunch of options. I'm not going to do it right now. You probably want to do the invalidate and restart. You want to do them both. See, this is all mine's coming up with is like this. It's not even showing the thing. 
I'm going to give it a while, but before I gave it almost a half an hour, it never came up. Finally, it came up and it said, do you want to restart or do you want to quit? So I said, okay, I'll restart. Then it came up and did this again. Then it came up and said, do you want to restart or do you want to quit? And I was like, no, nah, I guess I'm going to quit. If you get something like this, I showed this to Dominic yesterday. If you get something like this where you're like, you know what, I don't know why, but the darn, you know, I, 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 yeah, I can go in out and I can get you one of the tablets, but I want it to work on the emulator. And this just keeps happening. Then what you can do, I'm not saying this is going to solve all your problems, but what you can do is close the emulator. And really, I shouldn't be closing the emulator while it's running, but I'm going to anyway. Maybe that's part of my problems. All right. So I'm going to come in here and close the emulator. When this happens, all right, and you get an error and the emulator's not up anymore, what you can try to do, try to do. First of all, if you've got anything running like this, let it stop. It might take a few seconds. It might take a few minutes. But once, and I'm, I'm going to keep doing it anyway, just to show you what it is. You come in here and you go to Tools, if it lets me. All right, you go to Android and you go to AVD Manager. Everybody see this? The reason I'm showing you this too is if you ever want to, if you ever want to add a new virtual device, this is the easiest way to do it. So you go to Tools, Android, AVD Manager, you choose that, and you can come in here once this comes up, if it, there you go, and you can add a new AVD Manager. All right, but if this is the one I want to use and it's hanging, then you can go and right mouse click on that down arrow and you can choose, if it ever comes up, you can choose do a cold boot on the emulator, which is basically telling it to stop and restart itself. All right, you may have to do that. Again, it's like Valerie showed me her code. I quickly scanned it, but I didn't see anything that looked wrong with it. So what could have been wrong? I don't know. Yes. It should be near the bottom of your log cat, someplace in there in log. Cat. <coughs> Get forecast. Oh yeah, you're right. Thank you. Yeah, you do have to click the button, right? Because that's where all the code is. Because that's filling up the list box, etc. Now, the list box is still going to have garbage in it. It'll have the name of all the family members. We don't care about that. It's just Logcat. Tomorrow we'll fix that. Okay, then for some reason, something's happening where it's not, it's not grabbing the values. All right. The first thing I would look at would be to go back and where you had that at get. Make sure you put that in there correctly. And for your base URL, make sure that's in there correctly. And be the first place to look for those. And then, boy, oh boy. All right, there, cold boot now. So I'm going to tell it to do a cold boot. This worked yesterday. And then it worked fine after that, but then it hung again. I think we've all had enough for today. Okay.